Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're going to be taking a look at the first piece of DLC for Age of Wonders, Planetfall, Revelations. Set to release on the 19th of November, Revelations brings a fairly familiar sci-fi trope into the game in the form of the entombed S-Tech dynasty and the Heritor secret technology group that looks to awaken them. Before we dive into my thoughts about this piece of DLC, however, I'd just like to mention that I was given a free key by the developers for the purpose of this review, but this, of course, doesn't affect my opinion in any way. If, upon watching this review, you decide you'd like to pick the DLC up, consider doing so at my Humble Bundle link that I've included in the description down below and under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. Doing so helps the channel as well as charity. With all that said and done, let's dive on in and talk about Age of Wonders Planetfall Revelations. The core of Revelations is the addition of a new secret technology, that of the Heritor. The Heritor are descendants of the long-entombed Aztec dynasty, using their secret technology not only to reawaken the tomb-dwelling forefathers, but also to drain the essence of their enemies in an effort to unlock more powerful abilities of their own in battle. Heritor units focus on causing entropy damage, which is a new damage type, and since Heritor is a new secret tech option, as you might imagine, it comes with a plethora of new offensive mods, defensive mods, doctrines, tactical operations, and even skills for your characters to take on. It also comes with a new NPC faction. The Forgotten are the members of the Aztec dynasty who were not worthy of proper burial, and so they continue to exist in a more beastly form. Perhaps in a very depressing show of servitude, the Forgotten aren't always at odds with the Heritor secret tech users. In fact, they seem to be the NPC faction of choice, as the rewards and units that you can receive or buy off them fit right into the Heritor MO with the Entropy Damage type and the focus on using enemy essence. Beyond that, we see the addition of the Reaper units, a class of units that were originally meant to hunt down and kill all Heritor technology users, but now just hunt to kill everybody, alongside the Psychic Cat, the adorable Piglets, and the less adorable Megasau. And the inclusion of new terrain features is also present. Uh, we've got the Hollow Pad that gives diplomatic benefits, and the Essence Gash and S-Tech Essence Pools that are locations that either provide certain buffs to units passing by, or give the entire sector buffs to Heritor units while debuffing all others. We also see the addition of a new campaign with two missions in which you play as the Syndicate faction and the Tomb World option for scenarios, which seems to provide more of a focus on Heritor and Reaper units and tombs. And finally, the DLC also adds anomaly sites where you send characters to basically go digging, finding themselves in various scenarios that need to be taken care of over multiple turns through a choose-your-own-adventure style decision-making process, where the scenarios and choices are driven by the player's faction and secret technology. That certainly sounds and feels like a ton of new additions, and while some things are really solid new elements, other things feel like they could use a little more depth. But let's start with the good. And I'll be honest, good is an understatement. I really like the new Heritor secret technology and what it brings to the table, for the most part. The new units are absolutely awesome to look at. I think the whole entombed individual as a part of the unit aesthetic has been really well done here, and there is a really nice dichotomy between the rather positive vibes you get from the Heritor units compared to the more bestial, aggressive vibes you get from the Forgotten units. It's not just about the color scheme, but also the overall form factors, the shapes, and the way these units are animated as well. It all sells this idea of a fractured society, perhaps steeped a little too long in class divide. Beyond visuals, the units are mechanically compelling as well. The vast majority of them float, they all focus on causing entropy damage, and as I'd mentioned before, they have this aspect of using enemy essence. That last bit is particularly interesting as it is, I think, what sets the Heritor and Forgotten units apart more than anything else. Either through the use of unit mods, attacks, or a special type of defensive stance, Heritor units are able to gain essence charges as battles go on. Doctrines used on the campaign map can provide extra essence charges to units that are about to go into battle, as can various sector terrain effects and operations mid-battle can assist in the same way as well. These essence charges can then be used to perform various special attacks or abilities. The Heritor Siphoner, for example, can use essence charges to resupply a targeted unit with action points. 
The Heritor High Lord, meanwhile, can resurrect units with more and more hit points depending on how many charges of essence charges they've collected in that specific battle before using the associated ability. Quintessence Arcs can help buff and heal units using Essence, and the Forgotten units are also able to use Essence to get extra attack types and abilities unlocked. And on top of that, characters can actually have a skill that allows them to harness unused Essence at the end of a battle and convert it into experience. There's basically a new micro-resource that you have to manage, and I think that's a really cool idea, especially in mid-battle. I do wish it was a little bit harder for units to gain them because as it stands, most of them just have to spend a turn in their special defensive stance to earn one, and the return on that investment can sometimes be quite significant. Apart from that, I do also wish that there were more Heritor units. I understand they're just a secret tech, and their units are supposed to synergize with your existing units for whatever faction you pick, but I can't help but feel a little shortchanged in this category. And yes, it's easy to always ask for more, but I think that's more of a compliment than a complaint. I like all the units that we got. I just wish that there were a couple or a few more, that's all. Now, the secret tech also brings with it some new essence-related character skills, like I mentioned earlier, and unit mods. Some of them tap into the number of essence charges a unit has to increase damage output, either in melee or from range, while others help generate essence charges. The new doctrines and operations that are brought in by the Heritor Secret tech are also, for the most part, pretty interesting. My favorite is the Condemned to Drained operation that allows you to target an enemy who, upon dying, will rise up as a permanent addition into your army in the form of the Drained unit, a unit that can eventually level up to possess enemy units on the battlefield in a completely different battle. Again, they're added permanently to your army, so it's a really nice change compared to some of the older abilities where a unit would die, rise up for just that battle in support of your army. So again, neat touch. Now, all this is to say, the Heritor Secret tech brings an interesting new set of dynamics to the battlefield and the campaign as a whole. I'd really like to see more things like the essence charges in the future, though again, perhaps they should be a bit harder to come by. The secret technology is designed around a very compelling system, and that is essential, pun intended, when introducing something new into a game that relies on asymmetry like this. The other fun standout addition to the game comes in the form of the anomaly sites. They are in some ways similar to dig sites in Stellaris or ruins in Total War Warhammer 2, a location where you have to send a character-led army to investigate. It takes a couple of turns before you're presented with rewards and more decisions to make, and there were some pretty fun and interesting moments that were born out of these anomaly sites. I don't want to spoil everything I saw, obviously, but some threw you into battles, others provided you with a unique unit if you make the right decisions, and others unlocked special items, abilities, or traits for your characters. Some are serious, some are morbid, and some are hilarious, complete with accompanying illustrations. And of course, the campaigns that are added have some unique ones that fit the story as well. Now you can take your time with these anomaly sites as long as you beat other factions to it, and if you don't necessarily want to deal with a site after discovering what it holds, you can come back to it later. But you have to make sure, of course, that you come back to it before an enemy faction is able to get to it. Now this is particularly helpful when you get thrown into a massive battle because of choices you made. What you can do is you can fight the battle, chip away at the enemy, retreat, come back later, but again, you have to be very wary because if you've damaged the uh, you know enemy that is in the battle, another faction can come swoop in and take that anomaly away from you. So again, there's a good bit of decision making that needs to be made and I'm all for extra decision making. The devs have also done a really good job in making these anomaly sites feel special if and when you do battle. Damaged defensive turrets that may or may not shoot at you completely unpredictably particularly story-driven garrison units, really nice visual styles of the terrain and the maps that you're fighting in that fit the narrative, good flavor text, it all comes together nicely. There's quite a bit of variety here, and though the devs boast over 30 variants, I did see a little bit of repetition in my multiple playthroughs. And now, to be fair, it's hard to avoid that considering how densely packed the anomaly sites are. It isn't like you're going to be traveling for 30 turns to find one. They're very accessible right from the start, and they present another decision-making factor, especially in the early game, where sparing three to six turns at an anomaly site might be quite a waste of time when you should be expanding or prospecting or gathering resources. And yet, rewards range from resources to units to items to 
terrain features, permanent terrain features that could really help you in the long run, should you annex the sector the anomaly was in. They're a great addition to the game that sound minor in like on paper, uh, but in practice, they're actually very involved, especially if you're the role-playing type and your decision-making is driven by morality as opposed to min-maxing. Everything else the DLC adds is, frankly, very par for the course. The new campaign with its two missions adds a fair bit of playtime with some good twists and turns, some fun missions, and some excellent writing. Again, as with the base game, bringing a sense of humor and gravity at the same time. Keep in mind, when I say par for the course, that means that if you liked the other story missions that the base game provided, you'll like these two as well. It's more of the same, which is just A-OK -okay in my books. I don't typically find myself drawn to the story modes of these kinds of games, so do take my opinion with a grain of salt. And while the story itself is nice, I do wish the gameplay threw you right into the thick of Herator secret tech right from the start. Then there are the new terrain features. The holopads are... They're just another type of stash, really, mainly focused around diplomatic benefits. The Essence Gash is an interesting hazard, helping Herator units gain Essence charges every couple of turns while simultaneously damaging non-Herator units by assigning them the very same Essence charges in battle. And then there's the S-Tech Essence Pool, which is just another terrain feature that can be exploited by colonies and used to buff units that are passing through. The Soul Beacon has a bit more going for it. Not only does it provide a battlefield effect, but whoever controls a Soul Beacon is able to perform the Soul Beacon Maelstrom operation. It's understandable to add just a handful of simple features so as not to overcrowd the map with potential hazards and features, but I just wish there was a little more from the DLC to really flesh out the new history and lore we're discovering with the new secret technology. Finally, I wish the Forgotten had been fleshed out a little more. Don't get me wrong, I think they're really cool additions for all the reasons I mentioned before. The lore is interesting, the units are really cool, and they feel like a perfect addition in basically every way but one. The missions they assign are the exact same as every other NPC faction. I was a little let down by this, honestly. Sure, the flavor, text, and rewards are different, fitting the faction's style, units, and capabilities, but the missions themselves are all the same. Research something for us. Build something for us. Destroy this army for us. Oh, and also, we're going to make random, unreasonable, and annoying demands for Cosmite and energy every once in a while. It just feels like a missed opportunity. Their missions should focus on finding anomalies or tombs. They should focus on uncovering lost artifacts or some connection to their past. There's a distinct lack of unique flavor in the missions they assign outside the scripted ones driven by the campaign and its story objectives. And that just felt like a little bit of a bummer. Honestly, it should have been a lot more about, yeah, finding artifacts, going to locations, forcing you to fight those high tier, you know, gold tier armies that uh, are garrisoned at some of these locations, something like that. Uh, it could have done with a bit more fleshing out, especially since this NPC faction quest giving system is a great way in which Age of Wonders stands out from other similar strategy games. The devs just need to make sure they never stop challenging themselves to push that concept further and further with each DLC, in my opinion at least. As many of you are probably already aware, I typically try to avoid using a number rating system for my reviews. I just think they feel a little arbitrary, and they welcome weird comparisons between games that don't often make any sense. Instead, I like to focus on one key factor, bang for your buck. Was the game, or new content in this case, fun, relative to the price point? At $15, the DLC certainly adds many new things to the base game, and it feels like there's something for everyone. If you're going to play through the campaigns and also play some scenarios with the new secret tech, then yes, the DLC is 100%, without a doubt, worth picking up right now at its current price point. There's plenty to do, lots to explore, and lots of fun to have with the new units, operations, mechanics, and tactical options they all present. If you were just hoping for a new faction or a bunch of new units to play with in scenario mode, the conversation gets a little more nuanced. The Heritor Secret technology has a really interesting design ethos, with everything coming together around the concept of essence. There is a good mix of support and offensive troops, with a great selection of options between the Heritor and Forgotten units. The Reaper Hunter Killer Machines also provide some interesting new marauding enemy units with some pretty cool animations and visuals as well, and the occasional part they'll drop that can be used as an item. The whole essence system is really cool, though again, I do think it could be pushed a bit more, and similarly, I wish the Forgotten had more interesting missions to give as well. 
There are some aspects where the DLC certainly falls short, like the aforementioned missions from the Forgotten, or like the lack of compelling new terrain features, beyond the few I mentioned earlier, I mean, all of which are okay at best. I do wish there were more Herator units specifically, as in units that you can recruit without having to interact with the Forgotten, units resulting directly from research done by your faction. The new mods, doctrines, items, and operations are all fine as they are, and the anomaly sites are fun side adventures as well. The type where you might kick yourself over making the wrong choice or rejoice over the right one, but it's really about the friends you make along the way. I would say the driving force of your purchasing decision should be this. Do the Heritor and Forgotten units, game mechanics, mods, skills, doctrines, and operations sound interesting to you? Ignore the anomaly sites, ignore the new terrain features, and hell, even ignore the new Tomb World scenario. If the answer is a yes or even a maybe, I would suggest picking the DLC up because if you enjoy that core driving force as something to play as or against, then everything else is a cherry on top. I hope this review helped give you some insight into the Revelations DLC for Age of Wonders Planetfall. Overall, a ton of fun with a little something for everybody, it does fall short in some aspects. Aspects that are easily overlooked when you're into your 20th hour playing with the shiny new units. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts of your own, drop them down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more strategy gaming content, including previews, reviews, let's plays, and more. And a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis, and a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.